actually thank again our partners who are here, SCA, the Principals Association, and Seattle Council PTSA. Um, as you all have heard, beginning tomorrow, Thursday, March 12, 2020, all schools in Seattle Public Schools will be closed for a minimum of 14 days. This was a very, very difficult decision to make. It's, uh, we take it all very seriously. Very, a lot of conversations happened, um, and just know that it was a really hard call to make. Um, we made this decision because of a growing number of factors have actually made it nearly impossible for the district to operate normally. Some of those factors include the increasing number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the region, an increasing number of our schools that need to be deep cleaned each day because of some of the potential of some sort of student or staff contact with COVID-19, and of course the announcement today from Governor Jay Inslee to increase social distancing and to limit large group gatherings. Because of the size of our schools, um, we would not be able to meet those social distancing and group gathering limits and be able to operate efficiently. So during this 14 calendar day closure, we will not be providing online learning. This is because that we cannot assure that our students have access to computers and the internet. So for us in this district and as a result of our strategic plan, Seattle Excellence, that is steeped in equity and very bold with its vision, um, it is a matter of equity for us. The state superintendent actually urges all districts to take this stance if they cannot guarantee online access for every student. We do would, would like our students to get, remain in learning mode. And so we've been asking our educators to prepare whatever they can so our students can continue learning. When will we reopen? Um, I will be working with our leadership team here and we will continue working with the CDC Public Health Seattle and King County, Governor Inslee's office, and the Office of Superintendent of Public Instruction to determine a plan for reopening. In the meantime, we want all of our students and families and staff to stay healthy. We have only positive thoughts for our staff member at Aki Karosi Middle School who did test positive for COVID-19, and we wish them a full recovery. Um, again, I wanna thank you all for helping get this information out. I do want to take a couple moments for some personal reflections. The value of public education has been demonstrated during this health crisis. Our public schools are not only places of dynamic teaching and learning for our 53,000 scholars, they are places for our families to gather and for our community partners to provide their invaluable services. In many ways, public education keeps this city's economic engine running. Keeping our doors open allows healthcare workers to provide services, to allow parents who have to work to continue earning their paycheck, and provides a safe place for many of our vulnerable students to go each day. That is why this decision was so difficult. Our staff have been awesome. Every person from the bus stop to the boardroom has shown up day after day to make sure the children of this city are educated. While big tech companies and other governmental agencies announced that their staff could work from home, our educators continued sh showing up to educate these other industries' children. I want other leaders in the city to know that each time you call for social distancing, for teleworking, for not having face-to-face -face meetings, and to stay home, you added a tremendous burden and a lot of pressure to your public education system. Our city's reliance on our public educators and our educational services are devalued each time other workplaces ask their adults not to come to the workplace while laying the expectation that public educators will show up to educate the city's children. I want to thank the educators, custodians, nutrition service workers, bus drivers, crossing guards, administrative assistants, school leaders, warehouse and trades, central administrators, and everyone else who make up the Seattle Public Schools family. I know that we will get through this crisis and be even stronger on the other side. And of course, to our students, we will reopen as soon as possible because your education is our mission and it's our underlying value and it's of our primary importance. I'll take questions in a few minutes, but first I'd like to introduce School Board President Zachary DeWolf. Good afternoon. 
My name is Zachary DeWolf, and I'm the president of the Seattle School Board. I want to first thank our educators, custodial staff, administration, community partners, and school communities for your help in this critical time. I also want to pay special thanks to our communications and crisis response team for daily updates and for getting information out to our students, families, and community. Earlier today, Seattle Public Schools informed our 35,000 families, 12,000 staff members, and 53,000 students that we will be closing the 104 schools in our district for a minimum of 14 calendar days to mitigate this crisis. Our schools are providing world-class education while also serving other critical needs of our families. I want to acknowledge the extreme burden this causes to our students' learning, our families' ability to make decisions, and for our workforce. And while the impact isn't fully known, this is the best decision we can make based on public health guidance and to mitigate future risks to our students, families, and communities. This decision doesn't come lightly, but we believe it is the right decision at this time. So I want to take this moment to speak directly to our young people. We are taking this issue very seriously and working with the district, OSPI, and the state on some of the key questions that you are asking, including the impacts on graduating on time, 24 credits, and assessments. We also know you have questions about extracurricular activities and missed instructional time and impacts on grades. We're taking all of this into account and welcome your stories and feedback to schoolboard at seattleschools.org. In times of great need, our students have stepped up before to fight for a just response to the climate emergency, to fight against gun violence, and to stand up for black lives, to name a few. Today, I'm calling on every single one of the young people who are a part of the Seattle Public Schools family to step up again. Today, young people and students, you need to be leaders too in self-care and community care. Take care of yourself by washing your hands and staying healthy, check in on your friends and loved ones, and lend a hand to a neighbor in need. Small moments of taking care of each other will have a lasting and meaningful Im ripple effect on our collective health. You need to be leaders with your friends, in your neighborhoods, and in your school communities if we're going to effectively manage and navigate this time together. We need you too. I'd like, I'd like to now introduce Gwendolyn Jimerson, Vice President of our Teachers Union, Seattle Education Association. Good afternoon. Thank you to the Superintendent Juno, to the School Board President DeWolf. As was stated, my name is Gwendolyn Jimerson, and I'm a paraprofessional and Vice President of the Seattle Education Association, representing over 5,000 members working in our Seattle Public Schools. Seattle Way President Michael Tamayo is currently at home with his daughter, a fourth grader in Seattle Public Schools, who is sick today. On behalf of SCA leadership, we want to acknowledge the work our educators have been doing as this situation has unfolded. They have literally been on the front lines of this pandemic working to ensure learning isn't disrupted and school communities remain clean and safe. We want to assure all our members that SEA staff and leadership will be working throughout this closure with the district to address all the impacts the event will have on our members and our school communities. We thank you for your support. Good afternoon, my name is Manuela Sly. I'm the current Seattle Council PTSA president, longtime public education advocate and parent of three students at Seattle Public Schools. Seattle Council PTSA is committed to continue to advocate and work as a liaison for the district and families in Seattle Public Schools. We're confident the guidance from our public health experts and Washington State government leadership. We also feel comfortable with the school um, district with the decisions, very hard decisions they had to make. While this is a very hard decision, as I said, it is necessary. We need to follow their guidance to help prevent further spread of this disease to our loved ones. We ask families to care, to take care, to wash hands, to stay home as needed, and also to follow the guidelines for social distancing. Also, we're asking families and um, community to reach out to us, Seattle Council PTSA, so we can coordinate volunteers and organizations. We're talking to different um, school organizations and also as well as community organizations, and we need your help. Um, so we'll be working on coordinating. Uh, you can send an email to me. It's president at sctsa.org. Thank you. 
So we have time for questions. Oh, you do want to say. Okay. Sure. Actually, I wasn't planning on it, but I'd love to just say on behalf of all of the assistant principals and principals for Seattle Public Schools, we very much appreciate um, the support that Central Office has been given and all the collaboration among all of us is really unprecedented and quite refreshing, especially when something um, as complicated as this issue comes forward. So we thank you. So again, we do have time for questions. I want to uh, give you about 15 minutes for some questions for anybody up here. Yeah, so we are making plans over the next few days about how we're going to handle that. We have over, we have hundreds of partners in this city, and so we will be leaning on them a little bit to figure out how we're going to provide that service. We know that it's an important place for, to be open for children, particularly for parents who have to do, have to go to work, and so we'll be working with partners about that. That's always the difficulty of closing. I mean, we do this, some of the decision making. So just so you know, we've had a lot of um, emergency operations in place for, we, we plan for all different kinds of things. A pandemic is not one of those, but um, like snow days, you know, when we have to call snow. So we, for a snow day, there are things that just have to happen. And this is one of those situations. And again, I'm really sorry that this call had to be made so quickly. Um, what well, does not quickly, but so abruptly. Um, to put uh, some people in a bind, but um, as I said, we'll be working with our partners to figure out the pathway forward on that. Sure. So. As of now, we'll be working with um, the Office of Superintendent of Public Instruction, of course, about any waivers that might be have to be had in the future. So we've been in close contact with them. We're really, like as uh, President DeWolf talked about, concerned about 24 credits that students will need, particularly in high school, to graduate. And so what does that look like going forward as more and more schools will probably be likely shut down? Um, and so we're in close contact about all those academic needs. We won't be doing online learning because it really is an equity issue for us. There are a lot of families that don't have computers or internet at home. We have asked educators to put together some sort of learning plans. Like, for example, if a student's going to be gone long term anyway, in the usual process of education, they provide learning to take home. And so we'll be following those types of processes that are currently within our educators' uh, area of expertise. Um, one thing that's important to know is that it does not take the place of instruction in a classroom. So there will be a gap that we will need to fill eventually. And whether that comes in terms of makeup days or however that works out, when, as we work with the state level, will be determined. Those packets that are going home are going to be sort of like homework. So they won't really necessarily be graded. There'll be a supplement to learning that would happen in the classroom. But again, nothing takes the place of an instructor in a classroom. And so we're looking forward to when we can reconvene face-to-face -face classroom instruction. There's a lot of logistical challenges, a lot of different ways families are impacted. What's on the top of your mind as far as your biggest priority for the families, especially vulnerable I mean, that was why we were, I mean, every day waking up, working with our team, our emergency center here that was coming together, I mean, that was the top of mind for us every day of if we shut down, we will have such an economic effect on the city, particularly for those students of color who are furthest from educational justice that our strategic plan calls on us to be supportive of, of families that have to go to work so that they can pay rent and put food on the table. Um, and so that's why this decision was so difficult to make. We realize our impact on this city. We realize our impact on families who need our services. Um, we realize our impact on the education of our citizenry. And so it was super difficult. And, and that's why we would like to start up as soon as possible. Um, and so working closely with our public health officials, as we have been throughout this entire situation, continuing to lean on them about providing us guidance about when we can reopen because we know the importance of it. Did you receive any more confirmed positive cases besides the Hikurosi staff member? No. 
And then what about people like school bus drivers who normally get paid when they're driving buses? We're working with our contractors and working with our other labor unions to make sure that we're putting safeguards in place. Um, we know that particularly like our hourly workers need to be paid. They're like our families that are out there relying on services and the paycheck, and so we're working out all those issues. So the context for the governor's uh, press conference this morning and everybody had it uh, here, everybody's sort of talking about what we're going to plan to the end of the month, leaving it open, that this, is, this may not be it. Mm -hmm. uh, what contingencies do you have in place if this needs to be extended, which seems to be a real possibility? Yeah, we will be taking our guidance from public health as usual about when we may have the ability to reopen, but also we're in very close contact with the governor's office, the office of superintendent of public instruction, um, all of our partners in the region. We just had a huge uh, regional superintendent call this morning, and so there's just a lot of moving pieces. Um, just that's going to take a lot of conversation. It is going to be problematic. I mean, we have shut down the district for snow days couple days at a time and the impact of that even so I mean two weeks right now is unprecedented for this district we'll learn a lot of lessons as this two weeks continues but anything longer than that which may be what they forecasted today we'll have to take it day by day will this be tacked on in the summer will this be this time like school days are usually tacked on at the end of the year will that happen we don't know yet It was us, it was the district. Um, we decided given we have our first case, given the burden on our educators to show up all the time, given that there was a lot of concern that was spreading a lot among our staff, um, um, and knowing that given the governor's press conference today and sort of the arc of how this pandemic's going to play out, all of those issues and all of the conversations we had with our partners sort of became factors in, in making that decision today. Yes, because we provide the essential services to school districts, to school buildings, so we will have to still be in place to do the operations of the district. Cleaning, making sure that we are doing the work out in schools, making sure that we are working with teachers still who will be developing learning plans for students. I mean, the work will not end. Can you talk a little bit about the reduced price meals mm -hmm. and food, where we are in the planning on sure. the Yeah, we've definitely made contingencies for that, and we will probably follow sort of how we play it out during snow days. So we have set up, I believe, 50 or 60 sites that will have uh, central delivery sites for school food going forward starting Monday. Um, we're also working with several of our other partners in the city. We have great partners um, like Microsoft, who has offered four to 6,000 box lunches each day. And so we'll be coordinating the efforts from our partners, making sure that we have common drop sites and so that we are making sure we're doing as much as possible for, to make sure our students are taken care of and our families. The other thing I would point out is a, Last year, Amazon provided $2 million to the Alliance for Education, and that fund works directly with our school buildings for right now needs. So basic needs like rent, food, and so those guys have also been engaged and working with school leaders across the city to make sure that we're taking care of our families' needs. Right. We, we are working very closely. I mean, Chris Reichdell, the state superintendent, knows, I mean, I think this is one of his at least top five issues to be working on right now. He knows that it's very important. And it's going to be our number one priority we're working with his office on, that we know that it is a milestone in a student's life, and we want to make sure that they are able to march across that stage with um, the necessary education they need to graduate. So we will be working on that very closely. And just know, all of these things are still in motion. 
Um, there's a lot of coordination still to be done, a lot of information to be distributed. We will continue our daily communications as things change, um, as things update. We are waiting to see what the governor says about the duration of his of closures that he might be thinking about. Um, and so just know we're in close contact with all of the necessary decision makers um, and we'll be continuing to work with them as we work our way through this, um, this crisis. Right now we are delivering to Aki and Cleveland, the ones that had to be closed today, and we'll start our food service on Monday. We're starting our food service on Monday. That's about 600 here-ish. How many? 650? 104 schools, about 12,000 staff. Is your other number? 35,000 families. Are there any more questions relating to the closure? That kind of stuff, you guys can, I really urge all of you to look at our website. If you haven't looked at it, it's just a wealth of information. The public affairs team does a great job keeping it updated with the very latest. Uh, and there's a ton of information about this very topic on there that it's almost like as good as a press conference to uh, get it directly from there. So look at the website. Certainly email me if you have anything else. But if you have any questions for President DeWolf or anybody else, you're welcome to in our final seconds because we do have to clear this room because there is a school board meeting coming up in less than two hours. Oh, I think this is, I mean, on the phone call this morning with regional superintendents, this is something that none of us ever expected to face as school leaders. I mean, this is really an unprecedented time. I mean, whoever thought you would have to manage a pandemic as a school leader, that's not in your books that you read in college, right? And so we are all um, learning as we go. We, again, because we have great partners in the city and in King County and in the state, we are all coordinating those efforts, um, but uh, they also realize that the education system is on public educators. And so we are trying to be in as many rooms as possible as they make decisions around the education system. Um, and so, but it, it really is an unprecedented time and we are all talking a lot, communicating, and knowing that we just, bounce ideas off of each other, we ask questions from each other, and we just um, are making sure that we are providing the best leadership for our respective districts as possible. Yeah, yeah I mean, we will definitely We've been thinking about longer term. We don't know quite what that looks like yet, but we are definitely putting ideas around what that may s seem to um, be in our system. Those conversations are also happening with regional superintendents. It's happening at the state level with the state superintendent. Um, and so there will be a lot of guidance coming out. That's why the graduation issue is so important about what does that look like over a longer period of time. Um, but again, we haven't received that direction. And so once we receive that direction, we will kick in gear and make sure that we are communicating as much as possible, doing as much work with our educators to make sure we are getting uh, lessons out to students, supplemental materials, um, but there's a lot yet to be figured out. Sure, I mean, every time uh, industry says that their um, workers can stay home and those workers then rely on our school system to educate their children, I just sort of think that the expectation that that puts on public educators to show up every day adds a lot of pressure and in the big scheme of things may add to a perception of devaluing the education profession that other industries are more important to stay home than educators so when you say 14 calendar days are you talking about 14 school days you just 
Do we know that? It's going to actually be 10 school days, 14 days total. There are two weekends in there, yeah. So you would be going back to school on, what, the 27th, which is the Friday? I mean, assuming that nothing gets extended. It's, that is isn't correct. it the Thursday, Rachel? Do you know the 26th? would be a Thursday. That would be two weeks from 10 days. If you take tomorrow, that's day one, count 14 days, four calendar days forward. So one, one last question, oh. Ashley. Certificated staff, they're all getting, continuing to get paid. Are they working from home? Are they like updating lessons from home? We will be working with SCA on what that process looks like. Right now, we would ask them, we put together a lot of um, our suite of online professional development. And so, you know, they can engage in some of that while they're home. All of them have district uh, laptops. And so there could be an expectation that they would engage in some of that professional development. And then again, depending on how long we're out of school, there would be some engagement with SCA about what that work might look like going forward. Thank you, Denise. So Denise yeah. has to get going. If you have any questions Thank you all for, for any of the here. other folks, um, I'm not going to volunteer them, but uh, we have about 15 minutes that you could uh, talk to them, but we need to start breaking down the room. We don't have any further information on that right now. We are still working with the district to determine how any of those concerns and questions will be addressed. Um, the district has said to us that they will do what they can to make all of our staff members whole. No, as the superintendent stated, that's the only one that we're aware of. They're not informing us. That's a confidentiality thing that we would think that would be between the health providers. And so when we receive the information, then the information comes forward to the families and the district acts appropriately. Yes? What kinds of supports are you providing for people just in terms of mental health support and making sure that they are keeping calm or feel like they can emotionally change, deal with all the changes? I can't specifically say what kind of supports are being, when our members are asking for supports, we're doing what we can to support based on what the needs and they're requesting and their concerns and how they want that addressed. So it's an individual thing. Some members are fine with it. They've acknowledged that they're following the CDC requirements. They're working collectively. They know we're working with the district. So those things are being addressed as they come up. Again, it's a fluid situation and it's new to all of us. So we're still working on the process and how all that's going to come out. But we will address and make sure our members get their needs met. Do you have an estimate of how many SEA members decided to stay home because they're in a high risk category or? No. Okay. Were you hearing an increased concern from your membership? We've heard concern from the beginning. It's not an increase. It's been an ongoing concern and regarding what's going on. We've got lots of suggestions, and so we'll be discussing that with the district as well as with our members to make sure that they're receiving the service that they need in order to continue what they're doing. Yes, we're asking our families to contact us so we, we can know what they need and also their availability. We have a few schools that have a sister school system where schools with uh, more volunteers in power are helping already other um, schools. So we're asking all our PTA members to contact us to let us know what they have going and also to let us know their availability and also for others to let us know what their needs are. Well, Seattle um, Council PTAs have been working with different PTAs and asking where they're at with um, childcare. And at this point, none of our PTAs are offering help with childcare because of some issues with insurance. But we are uh, there to help with um, simple things. Well, I don't want to say simple, with things like delivering food, um, providing information to uh, families that don't uh, speak um, English and also um, things like um, preparing packets, delivering packets, things like that, that can be you know, um, more helpful if we have a larger workforce to be able to do that. 
All right. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate everybody coming, especially this late in the day, and especially the TV folks. It's late for you. So thanks to everybody, and feel free to email me.